Hello, this is Jayanit16, and today I'm here for the very first video of part one, I suppose, of the diorama build. Now, this video will be the very first one, like I said, and I will be explaining a bit what I want to do, as well as doing a few um, building pieces. But the old videos, all, all this series, is going to be me building a diorama scene for my old gauge locomotives. So, first thing you need is an idea. The idea I have is only a small diorama, it's smaller than this table that I will be working on. This table will be covered up in the future, but today I can find anything to cover it up. Um, so, I'm going to do a small diorama scene for my old gauge locos, and it's to take pictures of the engines because I have no old gauge model railway at the moment. I will be doing the garden one, of course. So, first thing you need is an idea. So, the idea I have is going to be a side-in, a small side-in, and it's where the engines are put to not coal up, but just rest, or get out the way of the traffic that's running on the line, which will be um, a, a scene that's going to be on my exhibition layout linked up to the Garden Railway. Um, there's an industrial unit, they still use a steam engine, and it has to go on their branch line, was other traffic's running so it's got to be a nice scene to build so this won't be connected in any way to the exhibition layout but it's just to have like i said for pictures for my engines really um, i will be doing a side and where engines get away on the exhibition layout as well so first of all you need board now i'm very fortunate to have a lot of wood around the house um, left over from building and that and this is left over from my layout, my double O gauge layout. So I cut this this morning. I've sanded down the corners. Number one thing you should do. Um, I've got a bit of sanding paper here. Some of the edges are still a bit rough. So that's the first thing you need to do. Now, what I want to achieve with this is, and something I want to achieve with Red Rock and my other layouts I'm going to build in the future, I don't want it to be flat, I don't want it to just be a flat piece of board. So what I've got to do is raise up the track. That's the number one thing. And I've got left over here some of these, I'm not sure if they're model seen it or not, but you use these for embankments on double O gauge railways. And it just so happens it's the full width of an O gauge piece of track. Now um what I, what I do want to do though, when the track, if it's like that, not much clearance for the ballast. So I will have the track probably like that. So the first thing I want to do then is let's put that track away. That's my test piece of track. Um, this will be going on here. Now it's not going to be straight, the track. I want it on a curve and it's not going to go right to the end of the board because I think I'm going to have buffers about here roughly. But I do want it, the track going not straight like that, because that's just, to me, that's boring. Um, I want it on an angle like this. There will be a back scene across here, a retaining wall, and around this edge as well. So the pictures will be taken from this way, where you're looking now. So these polystyrene uh, strips, I don't know how much they cost. But I bought these back in 2008 from a small exhibition and I paid £1.50 for two pieces. I've never used them. I still got them done in the shed. So I thought, what a better time to use them for. So I'm thinking like that. Like I said, I don't want to go right to the end. So instead of cutting off up here, what we're going to do is move it down a bit. i got to watch out because the camera's on um, some DVDs. You'll notice all my DVDs in the back there. And that's just one row of four. Um, I got a room upstairs full of DVDs as well. I do watch a lot of films. So I'm thinking about here. I still want. Um, let's just go. I reckon about that. So what I'm going to do now is break off the polystyrene. I am just going to break it because I will smooth up the edges anyway with board. It's going to be flush. Um, so we'll just break this off. I'm not going to break the way I want it. So we've got a spare piece there. I will be using that in a minute. So that's going to be the track. That is where the track's going to go to. 
Um, now this side, I want a river here, a small river going across and maybe some grass, overgrown grass. The track's going to be very dirty. So we'll use that again in a minute. I might use over this side because this side's going to go up a bit towards the um, brick walls, the um, embankment walls. So I'm going to glue this down. I'm pretty happy with that. It's pretty straight. Um, like I said, the track then is going to be not right on the edge. So what we're going to do is use this piece here and move it closer. And this is just out the track not to overhang and it acts as a bit of um, st stability under the track then really so just make sure it's not too close to that edge and I tell you what I could I could break these off and have them long ways like that so I might do that sorry if I just hit the chair I'm using a chair as well to pop up the camera so that's one like I said I'm not worried about using this I paid £1.50 about eight years ago and um, I'm quite happy to do this. It's probably going to work out better in the long run. Um, there we go. So this idea all come together this morning. I wanted to do a diorama scene for a while now. And I, I realised I still got some leftover board down the shed. And that's what I've done. I went down that, cut some piece of board. And here we are working on my diorama i did do an o gauge um, a double o gauge diorama a few years back now and that came up pretty good actually i was really impressed with that so we've actually got one too many which is great actually no we aren't thinking about that so it's got to go farther up uh let's move it back a bit i want it a bit closer to the side move it forward there we go and let's move that one down because that's a bit wider There we go, there we go, and that one can go there. So, that's good, that worked out well. So I've used an oil length for breaking an half then, and used it over here. So, first of all, this track's quite bent at the end over here, which is a problem. So we're going to put, um, this track won't be used, by the way, this is just my test piece track. This is why I put my engines on, all my wagons, when I have um, take pictures of them on the, double o gauge layout or just place it on the track uh, you probably saw some pictures the other day so that's how the track's gonna go um, what we're gonna do is stick these the polystyrene and then in the next video when the glue's dried and that I'm going to cut these away on the side just make it a bit sloped because I want this to go down and there's gonna be a river across here that goes right across and I'm probably gonna have a pipe going under the track so i got to figure that out now because these polystyrene, that's got to be in the way of the track. So what I've got to do is just remove the track. Actually, let's put it back for a second. Now, I'm thinking the pipe's going to be around here somewhere. It's going to be one of these two. Um, I haven't got a pen with me. That's one thing I forgot. Oh, have I? Um, no, I haven't got a pen with me. I've always got a mark low, but that's okay. I'll just keep it in my head. These videos are going to be quite long, by the way, and I am going to show you how I built. A lot of these ideas will be coming from my double O gauge model railway. Um, so the pipe, I'm thinking around here. I want the pipe in the centre. Don't want it too far over here because you've got the end of the scene. So it's got to be somewhere here. Now I am thinking right here, so this one. So what we're going to do is remove this one. Now, I'm just breaking them in half, but really I should be using a knife or something. Um, but it's okay, you're not going to see these. These are going to be vanished once I um, go farther into the project. So we've got another spare one of these, so we'll just place that over there. We can use that later on. And I will apologise now if the phone rings, because we do have a lot of people calling our house. Um, family and friends and that, so it's a pain really when you're filming. So here we go. And that's where the pipe's going to be. Now the track is going to go over the top of that, like that. And the pipe will come up there and we'll have a river down the side here. And then probably something over here. But over this area, I think I'm going to have a lamp hut or something like that. Just a small hut. So that's alright. So I'm happy with that now. So what I'm going to do is glue this polystyrene down. 
Now I'm using PVA glue. I've always used PVA glue. I only use super glue from adding detail to models or if I'm building um, some houses. So this is an old ketchup bottle. Ideal for PVA glue because these ketchup bottles have a valve at the top. And that valve is ideal because when you tip it up, it can't come out unless you squeeze it. So that's good. That's what I like. Um, I'm just going to see if I can find the pen. There's my pen. I knew I had one somewhere. Um, I, my my uh, computer desk is behind you, so I'm just going to mark this up where they come to. Only roughly, I mean, I'm not too worried. It's just so when I place them over again, I just know where i got to put it. I won't come this way a bit more. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope it gives a lot of you ideas, like building dioramas. Um, that's what Red Rock was originally going to be. Red Rock was just going to be a small diorama. And then I thought, no, let's build a layout. Let's do it properly. So, yeah, that's what I plan to do with Red Rock. And Red Rock would be like this, but in a bigger environment. And there'd be more going on. So, I've marked that. I'm not going to mark these at the back, because these would just be placed in. So, we're going to remove these now. I know where they come. I don't know if you can see the pen mark slightly. Uh, we'll remove these two. I'll just put these on a chair next to the camera. And here we go. Right, so the glue. Now, like I said, it's got a valve on it, so you only have to squeeze it. We've got to put quite a lot down. Um, you can go over the top sometimes, but at this point, it don't really matter because you ain't going to see this. So that's not a problem. Make sure I put the lid back on. The lid's actually a bit gunked up with glue, so we'll sort that out another time. Um, so before I put these down, you don't just place the polystyrene on. Uh, you can do, but I always... Some people use a brush for this, but I've always used paper. So I've got an envelope here. I've just ripped the corner off it, as you can see. And here it is. Now, people use paint brushes to paint their glue into the board. Um... I haven't tried that yet, but I am going to do that later on in the videos, just to make it a bit um, cleaner. But because I haven't got any spare paintbrushes at the moment, I'm using what I always use as a piece of paper. And it's really simple. You just put the pressure on over here with your two fingers and spread it like so. And that's how easy it is. Now, I'll go right to the end of the board because I know roughly where that... I should have marked it down this way as well. Um... I don't think I've used too much glue. I'll make sure I don't go over the um, markings so I know where to put the polystyrene again. Uh, these videos will roughly be up to 20 minutes long. It can't be any more than 20 minutes because my um, camera only films up to 20 minutes. So I'm happy with that. I, my mouth usually goes quite dry as well when I talk too much. Um, so I'll have to stop anyway. But there we go. I've used quite a lot of glue for this, actually, more than I really wanted to. And what I have to do is let this dry now when once I've put the um, pieces of polystyrene on. So that's all right. That's sorted now. That is ready for the polystyrene. Now, these pieces of paper, I usually use these again because what I do, this will go see-through and dry now, making this part of the paper hard and flat and smooth. Just make sure it's completely smooth by doing that. Then, when that goes nice and hard, when you come to use it again with glue, it's going to make the glue even smoother. So, that's a little tip from me, because that's what I um, usually do. So, we're going to start from the back, and we'll just place these on there using the markings. My hands are quite shaky today, I don't know why. Um, and there we go, we'll make sure our straight, I think it is, I will check in a minute. So, I've noticed this glue does not come far enough down here. So, there we go. Got to make sure I don't get on the table, because my mum will kill me. <laughs> it's her table. And I do need to get one, actually. A smaller one for my Lego reviews and continuing this project. So, there we go. That's in place now. I'll just make sure it's straight with the track. Yep, that's straight across that. Uh, no glue on the track is there, no. Nope. That's okay. So I've got a spare piece of length of track already to do this. So we've got to place that one there. Use that one there. 
like that. Now the pipe's gonna go through here, but you won't see it over this end because it's gonna be underground. So I can cover this up if I wanted to using these um, this polystyrene, like so. Um, I will leave a gap actually, just to um, if I get a long enough piece of pipe, that'd be all right. And let's use like that. There we go. I don't want it too close to the edge because of the um, framework that will be going around, which will probably be in part two. I'm looking forward to doing that video, but I haven't done it before. So we got one more piece of polystyrene. And there we go. So that's that's ready for the track now. Um, I'll use my test piece of track because I've got to cut the other piece first, which I'll show you in part two, hopefully. Well, I might get the framework done first. Um, so let's just make sure I'm straight. So the track's going to go like that. That's nice and firm now. And like I said, in part two, I'll be um, I'll be cutting these down slightly, just on the edges, making them a bit smooth, like they're going downhill. Um, the back bits are right. I'll be filling that in as well, probably with newspaper. Um, so the track's going to come like this. I have got a wagon here, an old gauge wagon. This is my favourite old gauge wagon I own, Rose and Smith. And the reason of that, I have this in O. Double O and engage the same wagon, so I'm really pleased with that. And there we go. Now that is just a wagon, so that just shows how big the scene's going to be. Um, I won't be putting the loco in the scene until we get further on in the process and once the track's done properly. But that just gives you an idea how big this scene is. Um, in double O gauge, obviously you get more in. You probably get an O or A4. On this piece of track, well, the right piece of track, obviously, not O, uh, not O gauge. So I'm gonna figure out how I'm gonna do the pipe because I need to fit that in before we start putting the um, cover over this. I will be using plaster Paris, um, so that'd be good to show you that as well. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's quite, it's the longest video I've ever done, um, apart from my gaming videos, but on my other channel. So I hope you stick with, with this series and I'm going to be showing you loads of different things, loads of different techniques and someone just messaging me, um, loads of different techniques and a lot of things from the double O gauge as well. I can hear a dog walking around. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and for more, uh, please subscribe and like. Bye for now.